Hello everyone, welcome to the next Chebcast. Today we're here with It's Ghost UK. Hello. Seventh Outpost. Yo. Mr. Spook. Hey. So hi for hentai. You can't break my addiction. <laughs> and Jinx. A pleasure as always. Today we're going to be discussing when would necromancy be ethical? And we're doing a bit of a format change. We're just going to try something and see if it works better to allow everyone to get their point across and to make sure that nobody's hogging the mic too long. So I'm going to be like the kind of rule keeper in a way, which isn't really a position that I like to be in because I think it's like rude to interrupt people, but I'm going to do that. So basically how it's going to happen is I bring up a topic. We take turns on giving our takes on that topic. Um, and ideally that doesn't take too long. After someone has given their take, we all comment on what their take is like to just give feedback about it. Cause I think that free form discussion on things is very important. And I think that's when the, the best ideas actually come about. So I have to be careful not to murder that. Then when everyone is done, we have like free form banter about the, the topic in general, basically. So that's how we're going to try it today and hopefully it works out. So the first topic for today is basically approval. So ownership over the body, like if the necromancer seeks out approval from either the dead spirit or they somehow get approval from like the family in the case of like a world where there's no spirits or whatever. And it's just like, um, a case of like who owns the, the body, like your family might own it when you die and they don't want it to be dug up and used for necromancy. Who wants to give the take on that first? I think I can start cause I was the one who made the point prior. Uh, long story short, I think the way to overcome the issue that the body kind of belongs to the person who died or to their family that is cultural very widely culturally acceptable um or if if you know somebody dies then it's, it's difficult to to kind of get ethically the, the the notion that like well if they they died then the the corpse belongs to nobody uh, i think every relativist on this matter is going to be very uh, quickly um dissuaded if we were to take the corpses of their family and sell them to some nefarious needs uh long story short i think if you convince someone to give you their corpse after death and of course that it's not you, you you inform them about all the, let's say, repercussions and, and all the uh, possible things that can happen to that corpse. And, you know, and that they're not going to feel anything in the afterlife, uh, regardless of how you use the corpse. I think it can be ethical. Um, while it's difficult to do inside a regular society, because... You know, try to convince, try to convince anyone that you know you're gonna you're gonna do do well with their corpse. I I think in something like a necromancer society, where necromancy is some kind of religious or or uh, ascended thing, where it's like, well, you know, it's 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 a good thing to be raised by a necromancer, or it's a necessary thing. Uh, that, you know, if you consent to live in such a society, then you consent for your corpse to be raised. Therefore, I, I think that's the way we can organize things this way. And that's the way I think this, like, point can be addressed of, of the corpse ownership issue. What would be slightly less viable would be some, like, contract is like I give you something and in return I get your corpse. And third option would be something like getting the consent of their family to use the corpse, uh, which again would be very unlikely unless we were in some kind of, you know, necromantic society. 
I think that's about it for my point. Sounds good. Anyone want to comment on that? Um, I feel like surely having an incentive to giving, like, like say a relative dies and the government wants to use it, but they can't legally take it. If they gave you an incentive to of them to take it from you, then you could, they could always work with that. So it could be that you get paid money or you pay less taxes, or uh, it could be that you even get certain privileges, or maybe they sort of write your name down and they can always sort of have an IOU sort of thing that where they will yeah, come yeah, back. Yeah. And... Like a contract. That's what I was yeah, talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've got a question like with the whole contract thing, how do you get mm -hmm. around corruption? Like people doing evil shit to, to, to get corpses and stuff. Uh, would you like to go first, Seventh? Um, how would I go around it? I don't think you can go around it easily without some kind of like necromantic inquisition uh, body. <laughs> which, would be very, <laughs> which would be very funny, but effect. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, um, that, would, that, would be, that would be very different to what's normal inquisitions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't there like uh, a, like a whole like in Skyrim is like a faction that basically just goes around killing necromancers and they're dead, basically saying don't fuck with the graves. Isn't that Meridia's group? Yeah, I mean yeah. like their whole ass thing is probably just like they're gonna pop out more and more as that chicken happens. I believe that's the vigilance of Stendar who take oh. any kind of uh, Daedra worship or Daedra communing as evil. No, even Meridia though they take hates it. hates yeah. them as well. Yes, that's correct. Meridia hates the undead, but I think on, uh, aside from her cultists, yeah. that there's no real official like governed group. But the vigilance of Stendar are known for doing it, but they're also known for being a bit useless. Yeah. What about you, Mr. Spook? Do you have anything to say about what Seventh said? Uh, I'd agree. For Sorry, my audio just went out. But I'd agree with Seventh says. But to add on that, I probably do what you can see in Southern American countries do and use the bodies of the homeless that like don't have claimed people who go and say, oh, I, that's a relative of mine, kind of like that, like abandoned bodies. And I think that would be ethically sound to do. Yeah, I think. It's um, I don't think it would be, but because those people still have rights, just yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd argue that you already see it in some southern, like South American countries, like uh, a guy know, who's a doctor, right? They will take and dissect the bodies of homeless people who don't get claimed, and like that is legally owned by the state. Then I, I mean, that could be legal, but I don't think it's ethical. That's true. They're two very different things. It's, it's like, a relative, though, to each culture. Hmm. It's You're just viewing it from a very Western point of view. That's true. In the UK, they recently changed um, organ donation to be an opt-out system rather than an opt-in system. And that kind of comes along that same thing where, unless, if you don't know about this, essentially the state has access to your organs after you die. And that's i don't know if that's an ethical thing i personally i think that's fine just because of my views on bodies and death in general uh but i could see how some people might have issue with it especially because it's a very it's a very quiet rollout um that not many people know about yeah trust the british uh, bureaucracy to do things quietly <laughs> All right. Does anyone else have anything they want to say in particular about the approval thing? Um, um, I have something go. to say, but do you want to go first? No, probably, you go, you go. probably best to work our way down the list True. that way. Okay. Let's start with um, so high because we'll go in the list that's listed there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Um, it's also not too long, but like, uh, like even like current day, uh, around like some places state I'm not too sure how far widespread this is but it also like going to a darker creepier note but in your will you can actually give per uh, permission to someone to uh, use your corpse after death to you know screw like <laughs> the, like they've more or less legalized necrophilia in a certain sense it's so like as long as you put your shit in the will and it says yeah this person can uh, can do this after death uh, can do this to me after death 
Like, you can actually f- 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 just fucking do that with, like, in your will. And I think a friend said that you can also let your body be eaten by cannibals if you also agree to that. I'm not too sure about that last one, but, like, that shit kind of exists more or less nowadays. So if you can, like, uh, convince someone to, like, in- it's it's like reversal of enlist the war just let your body go to the fucking cause i feel like you might just have like more contracts like that pop up sounds good um any commentary from you guys i would say they were interesting points put up Mm. yeah i think for me it's like sure that's legal but whether it's ethical or not is a different story hmm I personally don't see it, a problem. Yeah, I was gonna say for like, for the, for, I think that is going to more ethics because at that point, it's just more or less going to the idea of if the person is more or less okay with it, if they are willing to consent, then it should be fine, more or less. I I personally fully agree with the. Um, I don't think it's a good thing, but I don't think it's unethical. Because if they consent, then it's like, well, you know, you, you, a person can do whatever they want with their body. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't I... say it's good from my standpoint, but, you know, I think uh, I think that everyone has their own, you know, morality. And it's more ethical to, in this particular department, to be more liberal, I guess. Am I able to say something? Yes, you can go. Could the argument be made for the ethical side of things uh, that the consent of the individual wouldn't matter because when they're dead, they're dead. They can't exactly be against it because they're dead. Well, I'd say in counteraction to that is that wills exist for a reason. And even though you're dead, you can... I I know that, depending on your view of the afterlife, you can or can't be upset because you you may or may not be conscious. But Mm. wills exist for a fact that your property can go to certain people and it can also be kept out of the hands of certain people. For example, someone in a family who might be a very greedy individual who might want a certain uh, heirloom of yours just to sell it off while as you would give it to someone in the family who actually would care for it. And that kind of thing could be also considered the same thing for body rights because, well, it's still technically your property. And yes, while you may be dead, uh, you might still care about your property going to other people. Yeah. What about Yeah, I think it's both morally and socially, um, like, justifiable to have things like wills and to consider dead people uh, that people's will because a lot of people set things up for after for like what happens after they die and like taking that away and being like well fuck you after you die everything you've built can be just taken apart mm-hmm. however we want it's it's i think it's very amoral i i don't think it's it's very good yeah um if nobody else has anything to say on that, I'll move on to my piece. Go ahead. All right. So for me, when it comes to the ownership of the body and all that, the the only problem I see is like potential corruption. So people being coerced into giving approval through, through violent means or through blackmail or through something like that. In some ways to be totally ethical and make sure that there's never anything bad going on you can't use corpses because there's always going to be this problem of people being forced into giving up their corpse or or whatever and like if you don't use the corpses at all then this this doesn't exist as like a problem so in this way i find it really difficult to give the okay on necromancy being okay when this gigantic problem exists. Anyone got comments? Seventh, maybe? Um, I, I, uh, do you want to go first? Yeah. Um, I disagree with that. The whole banning because of potential problems, I think, isn't a good choice because the benefits necromancy could have for utilitarian uses is too high just to stop it because of potential abuse. 
it's a very idealistic view of it when you have to see that everything we do is I gotta have problems, but if we just didn't do it, we'd be not progressing as much. We'd be left behind just because of our fear of something that could be corrupted in the system. Yeah, I think you're right on that. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it's about how much you're willing to invite the issues because in general if necromancy exists in the world we can assume that it's going to be uh practiced like like even if it is delegalized you cannot make a uh, a rule and then be like well you know if if i make a rule for for this then then it's gonna happen 100 percent of the time it's that that's just not the case the way um like that way you would just you would just outlaw legal necromancy if you if you wanted to outlaw it you know as a, as a purity measure i think however that like mm, I would say if you wanted to to endorse necromancy then just you know making some kind of society uh where it's a, a, a religious thing that would be significantly more um let's say easier to accomplish and and more doable i want to add on what seventh said and uh point out that yeah if it's illegal you're going to have a black market start to appear for it, which will do much more unethical things because there's no regulation that makes ethical necromancy because it's illegal. Mm, very true. It's something I couldn't stay on to that, but I'm going to wait. Sure. Just one side note, prohibition only increases demand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you can go, Reiner. So... You can see you can see this with the demand and supply uh, thing with the war on drugs that America had. It's for every one that they was uh, for every one that they were stopping and catching, even more got through, and it got to the point where they just couldn't. You know, it was it was clear that they just could that they had lost it and it just wasn't working. Now with it being now with um, marijuana being legalized in certain states, it's actually somewhat all right. The only problem there is monopoly uh, is big companies monopolizing on it and making it so that it benefits them at the cost of the electorate. But that's a that's a different issue. But what you could have um, when it comes when it comes to the rules that you know when it comes to necromancy things like that is what you could have. You can't and you can have you can have a rule, but what's the point in having it if you can't enforce it? You could have people that are able to detect when it's being done, or legalize it under certain or have it where it's legal only under certain situations. In Warhammer, for example, uh, the Empire of Man recruited a ton of magic uh, using people and recruited them all in uh, when. Uh, I meant like Warhammer Fantasy, you know, when oh, okay. oh. yeah. Uh, recruited recruited them all in and did a bunch of stuff with them, put them in different colleges and actually made them useful to the to the Empire. You can have something similar with with this. So you could have necromancy that is you could have like good necromancy. You could have it where instead of the corpse being up for debate or instead of something being up for um something along those lines you could actually have pe uh, have people able to communicate with the soul and spirit of the person to actually know what they want after the uh, what they want if they've had any last minute changes or if this or if they are unable to move on help them move on and so on and so forth it's like oh yeah so if we helped you move on do you mind if we do this with your party no mate no do do what you want with it <laughs> yeah sounds good okay so if no one else has got anything to say then it's jinx's turn Indeed. So, uh, for me, um, approval of the body being utilized for necromancy, I think it would have to be something that would be ingrained in a, uh, a society that's already preset. Um, for the sake that the big problem uh, when it comes to approval is obviously, as Cheb mentioned before, that people can be influenced because that's just how we are. A good uh, parallel to this in real life is actually wills and uh, euthanasia in general. 
um, obviously having access to controlling your own life is an incredibly important right in real life. But a lot of people who are for the open usage of euthanasia, uh, one of the big issues they have to face is that there are unfortunately people who are terrible individuals who would push for older members of families to go for euthanasia for the sake of, oh, it needs to uh, help the family because what you're doing is you're, you're costing us money by keeping you alive or you're causing trouble to people. Or even worse, they could want them to push for euthanasia so they can gain access to stuff that would be written on their will. And these types of things are something that lawmakers today are incredibly important uh, to deal with for a lot of people. And it makes the, 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 what should be the simple matter of being able to choose how you end your own life an incredibly complex topic. And so I think it's rather similar for when it comes to bodies, especially when it comes to people who have certain beliefs of the afterlife and how your body is handled. Because obviously some people believe that the soul is tied to the body and thus disturbing the body all will disturb the soul. And there are others that believe that the soul simply exits the body. And when that happens, it doesn't really matter what happens to the body. But it's entirely an independent thing. But if someone was to be convinced either in real life or uh, if they were to be convinced via communing with them as spirit and then someone with particularly nefarious uh, beliefs were able to convince them to let them use the body for certain reasons but then left out certain details or such about suffering or thus... Uh, it could lead to um, an incredible amount of suffering for the poor individual doing so. Um, so I think that actually the best way to handle something like that, and it's something that people have uh, thought about introducing nowadays uh, with regards to euthanasia and such, is actually introducing a third party. Uh, so before, if, if, if this was to be just a, a necromancer society that included people that just raised bodies in a, a formal fashion, um, it would pay to have someone who is able to oversee it as a, an impartial third party and then from there determine if the person is being legitimate or if they're being manipulated. And that way, you could maybe not completely eliminate the problem that this might cause, but you could help heavily reduce people of being manipulated. And I think that that's probably the best way in order to deal with the issue of uh, body ownership and especially for giving permission. All right, Seventh, have you got any comments on that? Um, that actually, so the the notion I, I've actually I've actually wrote it down. The notion of uh, of let's say pushing people toward uh, legal uh, euthanasia is it's let's say it's it's very widespread. It's very like 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 legal in a lot of countries especially in uh i believe it was netherlands mm -hmm. or was it um in i think netherlands was it switzerland no um i'm not sure about uh, in netherlands for certain you can uh you can essentially perform induced euthanasia if you have a pain that is too insufferable at the age of 12 with the consent of your parents uh, or at the age of 16 at your own consent. The definition of, a, of an unendurable pain is very wide, let's say. Uh, although I haven't researched into it enough to know whether there have been people uh, essentially doing this uh, because of depression, something like that. Now, uh, whether this can be manipulated, absolutely. Uh, there's plenty of documents in places where it's legal or logical and absolutely um, I don't think there's a way to to stop the abuse of that. Even if you if you get a body to to like assess someone's actual will or something like that because then that body will have the the power. Would you say it would be good to introduce a third party though in order to help reduce the issue if not I outright think, reduce yeah, it? I think uh like psychological evaluation is going to be necessary. Mm -hmm. Like like you will need 
some kind of you know psychological body who can like assess that but then how can you know this body is not incorruptible all right so, so yeah uh yeah do you have anything to say um i don't think so i think we're also so far going pretty well all right i'll skip as well what about you jinx i guess you already kind of did i don't know i think that it's a. Uh... As Seppen mentioned, it's it's very much a complicated issue. And while there are some countries that do uh, tie the idea of euthanasia right now, uh, it's 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 something that is it would be tied very directly to body ownership, and thus it's a complicated matter that would definitely need a lot of regulation. But again, this is of course in a society in which necromancy is uh, formally done by regulation and standards so if those aren't introduced then well at that point it's just up to the morals of the individual doing it mr spook uh, i'm gonna skip on this one all right what about you rhino um i'm just i'm just thinking so if if a pain is too intense then the person has the ability to demand euthanasia essentially Yes. Can this surely be abused to escape? Like, say, for example, somebody does a crime and it's really, really bad. Like, I'm just going to let people sort of come to their own conclusions as to what the crime is. Like, it could be anything from robbing a bank to um, staring at a pug too intensely to lollygagging, whatever. Um, but say, say that they're done for it and say that they're in prison and this person could be enduring intense uh, pain possibly because of an injury resulted from this or may or it could just be made up it could be mental it could be whatever um could this person escape their punishment by dying i, th I think it would have to be uh something that is done via reg again the regulatory bodies could probably tell oh this person's just trying to get out of it it's like those people that uh commit horrible crimes and then in court claim insanity in order to avoid prison but in actuality yeah. they know they're perfectly fine but for that kind of thing i think it might be that criminals are waived certain rights because if they are placed on trial for something like that in order to help with that but again that's a whole other legal loophole problem that would have to be addressed i think i don't know why but with, with I, you I say with, with sorry uh, with you saying like insanity in court i'm just i'm just thinking of uh, african people just saying oh no why why did you run him over the devil made me do it the devil yes he possessed my body yeah. um that actually makes me wonder uh because i've like i don't know what mental institutions look like out in the us but i know over here I am not certain if you are making a sound decision to choose a, a psychiatric ward, like prison psychiatric ward, over uh, a, an actual prison. I'm not sure which one is worse. Then again, we are talking about criminals who haven't exactly got the most, true. A mo most sterling logic available. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, did they even get the choice? It's like, so, which one's good? Do you want to go to this prison, that prison, that ward, no. or that? No. Depends <laughs> which person you bribe. I just want to say, the uh, as an American, our uh, mental health system is absolutely abysmal. Mm. Really? Okay. Yes, it is terrible. Do not. Yeah. Um, I've got something to say about that Netherlands thing real quick. So, um... Like, uh, the, the problem I see is, like, sure, depressed people or whatever can have, like, an unbearable pain, right? But I think to some degree, and I say this to someone who actually has depression, um, when they're down like that, their their thinking is compromised. And, like, when they can get exactly. out of it, exactly. then they, they wish that they'd never done it. But when they're in that hole, they definitely do want to die. So yeah. a, a law like that, uh, it makes sense for cancer maybe, but uh, it's, it's very difficult. I definitely say that's why third bodies need to be involved because even medical professionals or in, in let's say, 
necromancer body rights uh well, other necromancers um it, it would be important professionals necromancer professionals yes uh I think that it would be important for someone who's one medically trained in that aspect and two is able to keep a sound mind and not think about uh, the repercussions for their mental state and social state. Um, yeah. And as you said, especially when it comes to thinking about depression and stuff, because as you mentioned, uh, people don't think straight when they're feeling suicidal because at that point, that's all they can see. They have tunnel yeah. vision. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Um, I have something to say, but does anybody want to go first? No, I think we're good. I think that having a third, having a third body does work, as in having a third entity or a third person or whatever does work to kind of like uphold certain things. But what? The, but the problem therein, though, is because humans are inherently flawed beings. We're, we're just we're just apes with smartphones. Yeah, it's things will get awkward and difficult with us and i can't help but feel that to keep make sure that these people are in check you'd need a different body and so on and so forth so it could go on to become this massive bureaucratic issue wherein it would take weeks or months to get anything done because of all the paperwork and whatnot but um i feel that <sighs> how do i word it <sighs> I feel that this should be something wherein um, certain things have to be taken into account. But the, pro the thing is with this, though, is that I feel like nowadays, like, we're getting better with it, but I feel like nowadays there's a bit of a stigma when it comes to mental health stuff. Like, mental health stuff, not just in America, but in, a lot, in many areas of the world, is underfunded. It's not given the proper attention it deserves, or it's not given the appropriate funding it deserves. So you can have issues as a result of that. Yeah. All right, um, Mr. Spook, your takes on ownership of the body? Uh, I agree overwhelmingly with Seventh and what it says, like, you should consent. But I also think there's nothing ethically wrong with using death row prisoners as uh, to be raised as necromancers so they can contribute to society. Say someone who's committed, like, an egregious crime, like a mass murder or something like that, who is going to be death row. I think using their body after is a good use of someone who would hurt society so much. I do have something to say to that. Yeah, if it's finished, we can start asking questions. Yeah, I'm ready for questions. All right, um, we'll, go, we'll go in order, so seventh first. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not entirely certain if it's like and I, I can understand from like your moral standpoint but like I'm not entirely certain if I would want to put the incentive on like let's say oh well you know if if the guy dies then then uh, he you know his corpse you can can do the work or something I'm worried that that would put the incentive on the government to put more prisoners on the death row who should not have ended up there. Uh, the point of having life sen sentences instead of death row sentences is because there is a possibility that the person is wrong or that they all, you know, that they can repent somehow in jail. Hence why, uh, yeah, I, I think I think it would be potentially not perfect morally. Like, or at face value, it's, it's great, but I think it would open a lot of possibility for increasing amount of uh, death row uh, sentences, etc. Like, it, it it can open all kinds of negative um, precedences. Yeah, I agree. I think that's more a problem with the death row system in itself, other than the use of the necromancy, though. Because I'm all for making it that, like, death rows only if it's undeniable proof of crime, where there can't be even a single shadow of the doubt for a prisoner to be executed. Because I think the biggest problem with death row is it could kill an innocent person, because right now, people who aren't beyond beyond a shadow of doubt technically can be death row. It's happened before. Yeah, yeah. Hence why, um, yeah, I think it should be it should be like very thoroughly thought out. 
it's it's it it has potential for real danger so hi do you have anything to say um i'm trying to think but not really um i'm trying to think what would be the case for people who are like war criminals what about them i'm not too sure about their stuff but is, would they ever fall upon this jur- jurisdiction or do they have like uh better rights than that i think it would be something that would have to be uh regulated with in accordance to the fact that they have to by definition of their job commit the crime of well commit to the crime of quotation points murder for their job and the mental toll that that would inflict on them uh i'd say that would certainly be something that would have to be looked at and taken into consideration before they were put into the same category as people who are on death row i think that'd be unethical and also a war crime most likely what about you jinx i would say that it's all a perspective of if they are going to change or if they if they're going to be remorseful for what they did because again the committing a crime is something that's awful obviously but i think that crime committing is something that is an emotional response to something that's going on because you're not in the logical mindset about it and it highly depends on the situation can people be remorseful what they did yes can the crime that they committed be atoned for maybe not if it's something like murder because that person's not coming back well unless you're a necromancer uh but can it be something that can effectively cancel out what they did that's highly dependent upon the nature of their crime and the nature of the person afterwards um if i can chime in real quick i forgot myself i went over myself to jinx uh the only (laughs) point i've got to make on this is like necromancy in this sense is like an eternal punishment right you murder someone and you're executed you're going to be paying for that for eternity that seems awfully harsh to me Mm -hmm. that assumes that they have a soul i'd make them mindless undead if if they have a soul and they suffer after that would be completely unethical but if they do not suffer at all, like it's just an animated corpse and we're using their corpse, then it is ethical, in my opinion. Yeah. All right, Rhino, sorry to keep you waiting so long. It's, it's, it's all right. I've, I've been here just, you know, excitedly uh, jiggling in my seat, just, <laughs> <laughs> just frothing at the mouth, uh, re- re- ready for the leash to be dropped. Um, I agree with Seventh, and I do honestly think, like, in, in my opinion, I do think that uh death row inmates should like after they're dead i do think that their bodies should be given up to earth to science as kind of like a last contribution to humanity because science isn't just for benefiting the individual it benefits everyone um so if something could be discovered because of this then i do feel like it would be pretty beneficial but when it comes to the matters of necromancy when it comes to the matters of death row inmates i feel like um the the laws for the people being made to go to death row would be extended like it would probably probably lead to um an orwellian sort of society wherein if there's a high demand for bodies either wars will be started in foreign nations to create those bodies or there will be things at home to force people into becoming the bodies so if it if it becomes very authoritarian if it becomes very done in a certain way then you could be looking at a gradual increase of government power wherein the um wherein things that would be considered silly years ago are now the normality wherein it's not just the most extreme things that make it so that you're going to going to be death row and your corpse will be reanimated it could be uh, anything from quote unquote undermining the government's authority or anything like that um but going on to that i do you think that when it comes to when it comes to uh, to people sort of killing some like like if you've got life in prison i feel like that is punishment enough because yeah you're in the place that's paid for by the taxpayer you have a bed you have food you're also in a place where you're never going to come out from you're in a place with other people that is quite violent you're in a place wherein you will have to get used to the fact that this is your life this is what you're going to be stuck with for the rest of it 
you've got no ability to have a family you've got no ability to experience normal freedoms that everybody else can take for granted like um, if you there's a film that uh, was based on the Stephen King book um it's it's the it's the prison one wherein you've got this boy called Andy who goes to prison Shawshank Redemption I think it is Shawshank yeah yeah, Redemption. yeah. and you got this you got that scene with the old bloke who's coming out of pr- like he's wanting to kill somebody so he can stay in prison because it's all he knows and it's all he's got left so when he comes out to, out of prison and he sees cars and sees how different the world is he just can't cope with it his life has basically been robbed from him well not really been robbed but his life has been taken from him because of some because of what he did to have that in the first place like he's not got life in prison but even after being in there for so long he just can't come out and and join the rest of society yeah that's a life that is taken in my opinion that is punishment enough yeah i see where you're coming from with that All right we we've we're done with approval now we need to move on to the next point um the next point is when there is no soul. So it came up a little bit while we were covering the previous topic, but when there's no soul, necromancy is far more ethical because there's no one being punished in like some kind of cosmic afterlife way or whatever. Seventh, would you like to go on that? Um, I still think that the very knowledge that your body is going to be used by in a way that you wouldn't want after you die is still going to have an impact. It's kind of like having your, your, uh, let's say your assets taken by the government you've been opposing or something like that. You know, it's like, it, it's basically, I still think it's morally unsound to just take up somebody's uh, somebody's corpse, regardless of whether they were uh, wh- whether you know a soul exists or if they're gonna feel anything or not. Just like it would be unethical to like you know take away someone's property after they die. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from. Any comments? I'd say, again, it's very much a uh, property type of thing, like a will. So my property is being used in a way I don't want it to after I die. Uh, And in that case, I'm not happy with this. If you're able to obviously know this, if you're not just a blank consciousness after death, entirely dependent on your own views. So I could definitely agree with that. Um, pers- I, my personal beliefs are different, but obviously I'm willing to understand and accept that other people feel differently about that type of thing. So, hi, what do you think about this topic? Um, I'm not too sure on what to add, what's not already be, uh, been covered. Um. I feel like they'd be more willing participants, maybe if like also like there's like a large uh, unscaled uh, thing going on, like a war or something. But beyond that, I'm not too sure because it's still the idea of like someone manipulating your corpse, so it's still kind of iffy for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I'll give my point quick, and then we'll go on to Jinx. So basically, I think when there's no soul it becomes a lot more ethical because there's no suffering in an afterlife or, or, or anything like that. But yeah, Seventh's point about it being like kind of like misuse or against the, the wishes of the person that was alive, that's like, it's somewhat of a problem. All right, Jinx. I think personally, uh, as long as the soul is not involved, then it's fine due to the fact that the inherent evil nature of necromancy when viewed by those who fear it is due to the fact that it is inherently tied with suffering. Um, And due to that, necromancy can be considered a really difficult subject to get into with people because they think, oh, you torture people for all eternity after their death. That's awful. But it's... 
it, the problem is it's highly dependent on the nature of the setting that it's part of. Some settings require souls to go into bodies to animate them, and that in itself makes necromancy evil. There are others that just require magic to be essentially filling a body, and in that case, they just need to... Uh, it's essentially just like casting a fireball, but you're using a body as, a, as an animate uh, object in order to um, do something with the magic. And in that sense, I'd say it's fine, just for the fact that it's uh, it's an object that is being used that otherwise would not be getting use. But I'm also aware that that's my own personal belief. And if I was, say, the master of a world and I was a lich and in control of everything, that would be what I would decree. But that's very much a societal thing that would have to change due to the reverence that bodies have right now. And, of course, the belief that souls are inherently tied to bodies. And due to that... It's very much something that needs to be, uh, I think, a long-term goal for a necromantic society or just for a world um, that has necromancy in it. All right. Um, Sohai just said he has an idea now, so go ahead, Sohai. Um, I don't know why it didn't hit me earlier, but like, um, I kind of forgot about this. But like. What happens if, like, there's an ongoing war as well? Because when that happens, like, necromancy is just going to be like, pretty much used on both sides. Your side as well as the opposing side. With the way of how everything is, with, like, like extreme survival, uh, would it be ethical for a person to be like, using necromancy in that kind of warfare? Because I'm trying to think, like, back in, like, the trenches of World War II, it's pretty much, like, a survive if you can. Pretty much, like, do whatever you need to do if, you, if you're going to live. So, if a person reads necromancy, would that be ethical, or...? Do you mean in, in relation to souls? I mean, like, just like, a soul or no soul? It's like, would it still be ethical to use it on the opposing side? Raise the enemy's bodies to go and help fight with your own faction? I've got something to say to that. Sure, okay. Um, okay, so, you know, when it comes to uh, previous wars and artifacts being nicked from on from countries that are participating in that war right mm -hmm. so like with world war, like with world war ii for example when uh, america england well not not just world war ii but like throughout so all of the wars in history you've had different artifacts different valuables being taken and stolen and put in museums and kept and whatnot i feel like you would have a similar concept i feel like you'd have bodies that would be um quote unquote liberated and you would have the and in peacetime you'd have the issue where in these countries would want their bodies back for the families and the grieving and um people and whatnot and uh similar to how we have it nowadays it would be the case of nah no nah, we're, we're, we're we're not done looking looking we're not done instead of it being artifacts with we're not done looking at them yet in museums it would be the case of now nah, we're not done using them yet to uh do our, work our fields and you know just do our labor you can have them back after we're done yeah, um, in my mind, it's basically like the equivalent of people seizing enemy artillery or whatever and then just turning it around. To me, it's the same. Like, you're just using the enemy's property against them, basically. You could you could even have it where, in similar to World War Two, you could have it where, uh, with the Germans sort of writing a letter to the Americans to stop using shotguns in trenches, and you had the Allies writing to the Germans to stop using uh, gas and whatnot. It could you could have something like along the lines of a letter being strongly worded saying, "Can you please stop nicking our corpses and turning them against us?" <laughs> Mr. I think oh, sorry. Uh, that you have raised a strong point with regards to, let's say, I'm a necromancer, and can I use corpses to protect some place? I think in an offensive manner, and like in general, if it comes to the ethics of war, I don't think, I don't think uh, using corpses to an, an offensive manner. Uh, is a good thing, but uh, I think that if you were to use the corpses of the people who have been trying to kill you to protect yourself and or others while not, you know, moving in, in like a defensive war, something like that, I think 
that would be more ethical. I, I still don't think it would be, you know, an, an ethical thing. I don't think it would be a good thing um, to use corpses nonetheless, but it's like you are in the end doing evil in response to an evil or like picking a lesser evil. I think it's fighting it's, fire with fire. Yeah. yeah. I think it's better to cho- to use the corpses and raise them in order, especially if you can like scare some of the enemies off and not lead to a fight at all. Uh, I think if you can like, like essentially use that, use it that way, I wouldn't equate it to just using enemy tools because I think corpses are, are somewhat more than just property. Mm. But in, I, I, I still think that it's, it's, it's an evil, but it's a lesser evil in certain cases. I have something to say, and it amuses me a lot, and it shouldn't, but I'm just, I can't help but think it's hilarious. Right, you can say it, and then we'll move on to Mr. Sp- yeah. Oh, no, so it says says the ally. Well, what do we do? They've got mine stand, and, and we can't cross it. Hmm, looks at all the corpses of, the, of their dead. You know what? I think I've just discovered some minesweepers. <laughs> that's a good shower thing. of limbs. <laughs> oh, damn, that's actually one interesting creative use of it. Huh. <laughs> all right. Can we have the corpses back? Yeah, yeah, they're just littered about the battlefields. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Look, there's an arm over there. <laughs> Your thoughts on the soul and all that? Your turn, Mr. Spook. No, oh, um, when there's no soul at all, other than like the normal ownership problems you get, I don't think there's anything wrong with it because at that point the corpse is just an object, and I think people should have the right to be like, I don't want my corpse to be made into an undead. But when we were just talking about war, right? War is already like a morally and ethical like relativism because you're doing things that in normal society are abhorrently ethical because that's just what happens in war so raising those as an army there is nothing inherently wrong with that in war ethics so if, if they were suffering and you brought them back I think that'd be like something you'd ban because they'd be suffering and that's unethical in most cultures but with no soul and you know that person's no longer suffering there's absolutely nothing unethical of, but as long as they're consented or if it was used in war, there's nothing unethical about it. Mm. Yeah, war ethics is a very interesting thing to bring up. Yeah, because things can get screwy because, like, a person can be suffering after death, but, like, it's just, like, magic and all. Isn't that, like, me at some point someone's going to be set on fire by, like, a fireball or, like, intense cold from just, like, a freeze spell? Just pick your poison, really, isn't it? Yeah. It, it at that point, it kind of is. War because... is hell, and so is death. Okay, if everyone's finished with that, I've question. got. I do. I do. Like, I have got a fair bit to say, but I want to try and say it quickly so we can move on. Okay, you're up next, actually. Like for your longer uh, period, so you've got a good five minutes or something. Ooh. Um, for the when there is no soul. Yes. Yay. <laughs> Should I start now or wait until yeah. after somebody else? Is... Okay. Cheers. Okay, so first things first, I feel like the Geneva suggestion would <laughs> uh, would definitely take necromancy into account. Um, I feel like a lot of cultures as well, and I feel like a lot of um, governments would also use this to their advantage. So you'd have some cultures that like, would have um, a certain way of explaining about it. Like, the fact of the matter is that it's a fact that there is no soul. So after you're dead, there's no soul, so there's no need to worry about that. This can still not be taken into account by certain peoples and certain groups or certain cultures. You could have it where the, where people believe that the soul remains, um, and they would explain that uh, the reason as to how necromancy is actually works is that the soul is actually being put into the body, and it's being controlled. 
So you could have a culture that would see it as naturally abhorrent to use bodies. You would have a culture where uh, that could explain it in a way that uh, the government can use their own advantage. Like you know how in World War One and Two, how you'd have uh, young like there was a very pro-war incentive going on then, wherein you'd have like uh, shows where young young blokes would go off, like they'd they'd get a kiss on the cheek from a woman, and then they'd go off to sign some papers, and then they'd go be sent off to war. Yeah, I'd imagine it would be something like that, wherein there would be a sort of cultural inclination towards not so much donating your body, but so much as uh, giving yourself to a greater cause or giving yourself to the war effort. Wherein it's a good thing where if you're it's a good thing to die so that you're, you're, you would still have use, you would still have this, uh, you'd still be able to contribute towards your people and towards your nation and towards, you know, like it would be a very sort of patriotic thing. So it's like, oh, what do you want? What do you want to do for a living? Oh, I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna fight, and I'm gonna die, and then I'm gonna fight again. So you could you could have that, but you could also have it wherein um, it could be sort of used as a way to go about certain things. Wherein, if the narrative is controlled by a certain religious group or a certain government or body or authority, then that narrative would change throughout history, and that narrative would alter to fit the demand or fit the needs as required. So it could be that on one period there is no, uh, it's more matter of fact. There is no soul. Everybody knows that there is no soul. And then in a hundred years time under the rule of somebody else or under the authoritarianship of somebody else or whatever, it could be that the narrative would change entirely. And there is actually a soul. It's just the case where the soul is only there for people who actually earn the right to become a soul. So how do you earn the right to become a soul? And then it could go into that direction. Like there's a lot of ways it can go. But I feel, but I feel like there would be a lot of um, minds, trips, and journeys towards justifying and having it to be a certain way. And I feel like because of this, there would be things that would be more dogmatic and kept in, not because they're actually positive or good, but instead because they're actually reminiscent from previous times. Like, like imagine nowadays, for example, wherein you've got. Um, certain things that linger today because of how they used to be in the past like in england we've got two taps for cold and hot water instead of one tap that turns one way or the other this is because of this is because of how it used to be in the past and it's lingered from that we can change it we just don't and you can have the exact same thing with this as well you can have laws that will affect bodies or you can have certain cultural or societal views when it comes to bodies that will linger that will need generations of work to undo so there can be a lot of damage and there can be a lot of interesting things that can be employed with this. Awesome. Um, you're finished, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm thinking of what to say, but I, I, just, I don't want to natter on and on. Oh, that's okay. Um, seventh, you got anything to say um, about I think a good point to bring up is I think that we were discussing what if the soul was like proven to have no like like it was 100 percent certain that it wasn't um a thing not like in the in the real world where it's like we we aren't entirely certain uh whether a soul is a thing or not etc etc hence why i think yeah um i don't think it would be much of a subject to a particular narrative if something is 100 percent proven i think it, it could be subject to a to a narrative for some time but then you know how should i say like, like things may take some time to kind of ease into the public consciousness but once they do it's done yeah i have something to say to that um am i allowed to reply yeah, yeah. right i feel like for that that would that would still be that would work and that would be actually very very interesting because i mean take um modern day stuff for example like take vaccines We've pr we have scientific proof and years and years of progress and development and science and money funded into vaccines towards diseases the idea the idea that you have a weakened disease that's injected into somebody so that they can develop an immunity and then they can become immune to it it's an ingenious idea and it's what we've used for years and years and years and, it, and it's absolutely fantastic you still have people that say it's a hoax and, and they don't want it. And so they will have their kids dying because they are so 
deep into this rabbit hole of uh, conspiracy and disbelief that they would rather their kids die of preventable diseases and have diseases that were prevented coming back instead of actually doing the doing this thing which so many selfless people and so many amazing people have put effort in i feel like you would have the exact same thing you'd have people that don't like the fact that uh, there is no soul and so they would go through this mental um this mental rabbit hole this mental trapping of justifying or doing or altering it however they can to fit their own perspective yeah but you don't have entire nations do that no you don't no you don't so yeah. these would be these would be small groups these would be yeah. sort of if anything these could be considered cults you could say that but as i've said like like you wouldn't have entire nations be no, no. Or, or like entire powerful groups it would be just like small cults no and, unless and, yeah i mean i i'm, I'm gonna say something that's gonna be quite sorry to um, interrupt we need to move on to so high all right all right apologies mm -hmm. it's okay you can go at the end mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah yeah so hi. Uh, yo. You have anything to say about Reiner's points that he brought up? Um, nah. I don't think there's too much I can add to that. It's more or less it. All right, I've got something. So the way you were discussing, like the whole being proud to like die and then be able to fight again, that that really reminded mm -hmm. me of like Japanese World War Two stuff. You know, like with Harry Curry, how they were very like um willing to sacrifice themselves and also did uh, kill themselves when they didn't want to be taken prisoner or, or whatever. I don't know. Oh, yeah. It's like the honor, honor and sepulch and all that. Yeah. Now, now imagine a society like that, but plus necromancy, that'd be like a whole new ball game, right? Surely they would just destroy their bodies. Self-immolate. <laughs> yeah. Like, like surely they would have a thing wherein like you could have them as you could have it where a nickname for them could be like what like um, mouth you could uh, here's a really shit one mouth grenades like oh oh so was, you don't want to get taken you just put a grenade in your mouth pull the pin yeah you, you use isn't that, that isn't that usually accomp uh, accomplished by cyanide well yeah but you still leave a body behind like this is disfiguring oh. and making the body useless because you can't give orders to that without without a head really can't you you can control it but it's going to be awkward not it with that line of thinking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jinx. You got anything to say about Rhino's points? No, I'd say everything's been fairly covered. Mr. Spook? No, I didn't think he'd say that. All right, Rhino. What, what, what are you going to say before I interrupted you there? Sorry. Uh, you can edit this out because I this can be deemed a little bit offensive. But I was going to say that you know how in the Middle East how they treat women, right? You could. I was going to say you could have a nation that would have a sort of not backwards i'm trying to be very careful with yeah, this very not selective. yeah um so during like during the medieval uh, periods i'd say i think it was the case where and correct me if i'm wrong but the middle east was enjoying some pretty good sort of you know they were vibing they were pretty they were pretty advanced for the time period and it was through sort of religious um uh hostility i'm gonna say that they at the state where they're in now which is quite unfortunate um but i feel like you you could have that with a nation like if you would if we look at america and their sort of right wing uh policies and i, I don't want to get too political but you can see this sort of more into an anglo kind of like english america and canada sort of where you've got more right wing sort of things that are um in place and it has and most people know that this is negative most people know that this is bad yet they're still in place it's ingrained and you'll have it and and this is because when it comes to education you just defund education you you carry on a narrative that's going to bring more populace to voting against their interest and voting for you etc etc et i feel like this exact same thing can be done in order to have it where like with seven said you can't have a nation that would believe this no you can't but you possibly could have something wherein you don't have a nation that I believes will follow this, but it could have a decline into it. You could have it where it's not everyone that believes it, but the people in power do. You could have it where there's not everyone that follows it, but enough people do. And 
with how we are as human beings, it could be one of those where it can only last 100 years. It could be one of those where it could last only so many generations before it gets outdated and replaced. It could be that it will bring the country to its knees, right. so they get rid of it and bring about, um, you know, like to bring a revolution about. Like, there's a, it could be very, very interesting. But um, yeah, yeah. Sorry to cut you off there. We've got it's fine. It's fine. We've got 20 minutes left, and um, I'm trying to think what topic can we cover in that short amount of time maybe the animals one mm. what do you guys think i think that would be an interesting topic point uh, uh, the only points that i would put so down for up, what are we limited by uh, do you have to time. go somewhere or just the that the podcast one hour and 30 minutes has reached like we can go a bit okay. over if you guys want to that's all right. The, the points I put up for uh, discussion are mainly just personal examples, so we can work around those and go for the more general examples. Mm, I'll, be, I'll be going soon, so I should be able to, I should be fine for this. Yeah, my ideas were just kind of plastered onto there, it's just in case if we need more points, they're not exactly like essential. Mm -hmm. So, which of these points is most interesting for us to cover? I think sure. animal use may be yeah. really interesting. Yeah, I think animals would be would be pretty good. Let's go with the animals then. So basically, you know, I think the advantages of using animals is pretty obvious. We already slaughter them. There's heaps of bones that those bones can be reused to make undead with. And it it completely bypasses most of the moral problems, unless you're a vegan, of course, then you can take issue with it. But as a standard kind of human society, you get around the whole problematic parts of using people for, for necromancy. Seventh, what do you think? Um, I think that if we have already killed the creature and we assume that they have no free will, etc., etc., then I would say that by all means, we are, uh, it's, it's not as ethically unsound as using a human corpse. However, it could lead to like larger slaughter of animals because you're like, well, maybe we're gonna eat it, maybe not. Current humanity is already wasting a lot of blood uh, so, a lot of uh, a lot of food, uh, and being like, well, we're gonna kill it. Maybe we're gonna make something out of its skin. Maybe not. Maybe we're gonna, you know, eat its flesh. Maybe not. But we actually care about animating the corpse. That's is, is like I don't think increased amount of of corpses produced is a great idea. Um, uh, or rather it's it's like it's ground for for potential exploitation is that the the uh this could lead to to an increased slaughter of animals um which you know most people consider it's it's like um ethically acceptable but but i think we can all see from at least certain extents that it could be ethically unsound to increase the amount of animals slaughtered mm -hmm. uh I, so so i think from this standpoint it could be it could be unsound but 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 i would say that j if it's just like we're using an animal that we we already slaughtered an animal because we needed the food we're eating as much of the food as possible you know distributing it within the society uh you know using the skin etc and then we're, we use the bones also i think it's ethical and i would even say uh it's it's preferable to just discarding the bones so, so yeah do you have anything to say about that um i'm trying to think not really i mean like we do kind of do all kinds of shit to the anim uh, animals to begin with like we have like genetically modified like a lot of animals in just like a lot of ways and to a certain degree a lot of animals are just suffering as just part of their lifestyle uh, because we want to get like the all oh, like uh, more meat or food out of them 
so even if there is soul or no soul in play, I feel like it's going to end up in the same kind of discussion of should you eat meat or should you not? It's different. It's a different kind of uh, uh, play style in Battlefield, but it's more or less the kind of same moral concept. Because yeah. at that point, it's just more like a question of what are you willing to do to achieve your goals? For like, you know, uh, animals, it takes longer and it's more expensive than to grow food. So people will try to genetically modify so it so you get more food out of it. I'll be at the cost more of the animal's rights. Well, my turn to comment on seventh stuff, Sue. I would say like, um, regarding the whole thing about increased animal slaughter um i feel like in the in the real world today we already treat animals pretty damn badly and we also make damn sure that we're being sustainable with them like you're not really going to run out of chickens they're they're sustainable they're in terrible conditions but they're not going extinct anytime soon none of the food animals that we rely on are going extinct anytime soon I think it's a good point. Do you have any counterpoint to that seventh? Um, I mean, one is point is like the amount of suffering you want to cause. And arguably, I think that we should limit the amount of suffering we are causing, regardless of whether it's to the animals or to people. Now, are we going to make them extinct? Most likely not. Uh, but mm. I would say in terms of uh, for making them extinct it would be actively uh, disadvantageous to make them extinct yeah. Yeah. so whoever is dealing with the bodies or dealing with the animals in general would want to avoid that it's like yeah. how a lot of farmers um, actively work to make their animals happy, not just to keep them happy, but because the happier animals produce better produce. Yeah. It's their own yeah. benefit rather than uh, just keeping animals happy. It's not like with milk and whatnot. Like, uh, don't they have a thing with cows where they have the cows listening to music to produce better milk? Let, let, me, make, uh, let, let me make an actual point about this. Um, what's another ground for... Uh, for increased like like negative impact is that there will be certain animals which aren't you know livestock animals that we're gonna eat that would be farmed for the purpose of producing corpses like maybe there are some kind of like apes or some other creatures which are really really useful as corpses but we're gonna be like well we're gonna make like s s like additional forms to support them specifically to sell them for the purpose of producing corpses that can do certain things like ape corpses that can you know climb on things uh etc etc i think um i think that it could produce grants for abuse as in like it could make us use up more resources than we explicitly need but I don't think it's it's particular. It's like all that bad. Maybe uh, it was something that would require regulation. Uh, yeah. yeah, just yeah, like yeah. how black market meat nowadays exactly. is not needed. Yeah, uh, Jinx, do you have anything to say? I guess you already kind of did, but anything more to what seven? One, uh, one thing I would say is one advantage to using animals is obviously animals are generally able to be bred easier than humans. Um, and if we're doing it for the sake of using every part of the animal, so use the meat to eat, use the fur to make uh, a, a clothing, and then use the body afterwards to create uh, undead soldiers. One real big advantage is that you could really focus on constructs uh, using animal bodies. Um, obviously, humans are also good for constructs, but with animals, if you're breeding them for the specific purpose of when they die, part their body is going to be utilized for uh, necromantic practices, constructs would be incredibly good. Because let's take, for example, cows. Cows have large bodies and large bones, but the structure of a cow is kind of useless for things aside from uh, just, you know... Piece of, piece of burden? Yeah, piece of burden. Um, but using those bones to instead make a bone golem, 
you could make very large ones and that would be far more useful for things like warfare and for uh just general Build, purposes building uh, laboring yeah all right mr spook do you have anything to say to what seven said uh other than for new animals getting like farmed to make undead i don't think we're going to see a large spike in increased consumption of animals because there's already a lot of dead bodies of those animals through the ages i think you just have them start raising the corpses we've made over the 200 to like a thousand years that we've already been farming animals as long as there's like usable bones still left or like some kind of corpse like that you'd see the same with like corpse piles that you could use for a normal mech if you're raising bodies hmm so you really wouldn't need to go and make new corpses at an increased rate until you ran out of that natural resource of already butchered animals, which would probably take a long while. Rhina, what about you? I've got a fair bit to say. Um, okay, so... Just, just remember, in relation to seventh one, mm. not the top um, yet. I think that when it comes to animals being sort of... How do I word it? I feel like uh, animals would sort of, there would be a thing for rights on them, wherein you would have it where um, certain animals would have more rights than others, uh, depending on, I guess, usage. So livestock can farm animals, like, I feel like they're bone, like they would be bred to, not only would they be plumper and fatter to produce more meat, but also uh, they would have, like you'd have breeds that would have uh, denser or sturdier bones to be used for other stuff. I feel like pets uh, would, like the bones of pets would be kept and there would be taxidermy done on them to kind of like keep them around. Um, although this is going to be really, really weird and I feel like people would do this t uh, that are unable to move on after a pet has died. Um, and I feel like that some people would like to grieve and to kind of deal with it, they would do that. I feel like when it comes to... When it comes to exotic animals, you're not going to be able to stop animals being driven to extinction. Like, our influence on the planet is... If, if, we're, if we were able to control it, we would see that. If we were able to willfully control it, we would see that. Like we have seen, we have seen the world uh, improve a lot due to COVID because people are driving less cars and people are staying indoors and whatnot, which is good. But if anything, I feel like exotic animals, there would be such a big demand for them. It would be kind of like diamonds, wherein you'd have an artificially inflated price of them. So you would have certain animals that are prized and kept uh, in captivity and bred in captivity for certain qualities being prioritized over others. And the result of this would be uh, would be animals being uh, the bones of these animals being sold to wealthy individuals and companies purely just for what these animals can be used for. And it would it wouldn't so much be a thing of like you Sorry, could have it where you can have a eh? what? Sorry, the time is up. <laughs> Um, am I allowed to quickly finish the? Yeah. All right. Finish uh, the so you could you could have it wherein it's more quality over quantity, but um, you can have it where it's also a thing of prestige. Oh, look at how wealthy I am! I have the bones of this animal from the most extravagant island of who the hell are? Etc. Etc. So you can have that. All right. So hi. Your thoughts on animals. Uh, just already kind of give in mind. There's not too much. I mean, like, you can definitely do some weird shit with bone golems. Another thing is also, like, finding mystic animals, just, like, out in the wilds. Like, there's farm animals, and those are, like, finding, like, mystic animals out in the wilderness and that kind of shit. That would be definitely kind of interesting. I'm not too sure, uh, but I I'm actually, I, I feel like that might anger the druids or the nymphs or whoever the fuck is, like, the, the woodland spirits, but the, the if, fey wilds <laughs> the fey the fey wilds yeah it's like that might kind of annoy them but it, it, i don't at, at that point i don't fucking know they just might just be annoyed with their existence in general because you know normal life shit just might not like necromancy to begin with so i feel like all is fair in love and war i have a question yeah uh for this i mean it's like a general thing so i'm not sure if i should ask it now um let's wait till the end mm. if you don't mind sorry it's it's general, but it's on this topic, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll wait until, yeah. Um, I said my piece, Jinx. I think that 
again, as I mentioned before, bo- bone golems are perhaps one of the most useful things for warfare in a necromancer's arsenal because of sheer mass of bone makes them far more useful for combat. As as you previously mentioned before, skeletons in general have a big issue when it comes to mass, when it comes to combat. The bone golems kind of counteract that by using bigger bones uh, and generally larger and more powerful types of ma- binding magic that lets them be more useful in combat. And of course, there's also the fear factor that makes them far more useful. And when you don't have to just limit yourselves to... Uh, human bones you can make them far larger than usual and i think with animals um the thing is when it comes to uh necromancy it's all about suffering versus um the end result so for animals when it comes to actually uh raising them as seventh mentioned in many cultures it's better to use every part of the animal if you're going to use an animal so why not use the body to create something more uh useful in death as well so i don't really personally see an issue with it as long as there is not that much suffering and of course as long as the soul isn't involved because that's my main point if the soul is involved then that's a big no yeah all right seventh do you have anything to say to jinx this point no no i mostly agree so hi nah i'm good mr spook no rhino i have nothing comes to mind all right then we'll go on to mr spook's feelings on animals for necromancy ethically uh, I don't think there's anything unethical about using animals as long as it's not someone else's pet. If you own an animal, then it is yours and then you could raise it after. But if like you're going in the forest, say you hunted and killed an animal, or you're using it as a more industrial reason for raising corpses, like for use in farm work and other utilitarian uses, then there's nothing ethically wrong with it. Anyone got anything to say about that i guess not probably i feel like it would be a very general thing to assume uh with animals um with regards to ownership because obviously animals are their own things but again it also could be argued that animals don't have the same level of consciousness and thus cannot make decisions about their own uh undeath i presume unless you're a druid and can talk to them in which case you could simply ask them and then it just becomes a problem of ownership and giving uh the correct go ahead to use the body i have something to say to that uh yeah sure go but two minutes i'm not sure if you're going to be able to ask like if you have a druid to ask an animal i'm not sure if, if you could ever ask an about using its body after death we don't understand death like to us it scares a lot of people because it's how do you imagine it it's nothingness you're becoming nothing your consciousness is gone your life is forfeit you are becoming a not being and animals likewise fear what they don't understand like I, i've i've had it multiple times when walking a dog when uh it passes farms and gardens and whatnot when the burning stuff she just cannot go down there because she's terrified of the fire she doesn't understand it animals just don't understand fire and they they know it hurts them, so they avoid it. If you were to ask an animal about, oh yeah, can we use your body after death? I don't think an animal could actually respond to that because they wouldn't understand the question. How can they? How can they give you an answer? Even if you were to explain it, how could they give? How how could you get a good answer from them without it being manipulated or worded in a way that they wouldn't fully comprehend it? Or like, if you were to make it sound good, then they would say yes. If you were to make it sound bad, then they would say no. But to actually make it unbiased they wouldn't be able to give you a good answer. All right, Reiner. So we did everyone else. So now you've got your five minutes to, to go ham on this animals topic. Uh, when only animals are using the ethic. This. Okay, so, you know, when it comes to warfare, when justification is done to uh, justify inhuman acts under the, under the clause that it's fine because they're not human. 
it's fine we can do this and we can use this kind of explosive we can use this kind of a war crime because they're not really human so it doesn't count mm. i feel like i feel like this exact thing would apply to animals in different situations that would be very convenient to the person for i mean in england for example we've got um a thing with farmers you know and well it's not just in england but it's we've got a thing with farmers like treating animals right i guess uh you've got a thing with um i mean there's a we had it where the south got flooded some years ago and there was a massive thing where this farmer was appealing uh, to other people to help him move his livestock out and his uh, his uh, animals out because he just couldn't abandon them so and there was a big thing wherein a ton of people got together and helped him like there's a lot of care there's a lot of effort on this and comparing this to the more sort of industrial so uh, not not a generalization but the more specific like specifically to the more industrial ones in america wherein you'll have animals uh, that don't see the light of day that are force fed constantly to plump them up and there's a lot of like hormones there's a lot of stuff used to uh, make them a certain way i feel like w if necromancy could be done for on an animal you would have something similar in some places it would be more ethically done because you have a ethical board and things for that and in other places you would have a massive emphasis on profit something i'm wondering about though um what would what is preventing people from mixing human bones with animal bones if if in places where life is cheap and say for example animals aren't in as big abundance as other places but people are up there what is stopping people from, from what is stopping uh, people from mixing animal bones with human bones because how can you tell the difference unless you're a trained professional i suppose in that case it's like uh people who uh take human meat to uh meat markets and go oh yeah. have these strange mystery meats <laughs> yeah um i mean skyrim actually kind of has this right? wherein uh, they've got one guy uh for the court of Nimera. they've actually got a guy there who has it sells like the bloodiest meats in in the city and it's kind of implied that he's selling human meat and you don't know until after you've done that quest yeah so when it comes so i and with this as well i feel like outsourcing would definitely be a thing that um more like that certain countries would do. i was going to say more developed to western countries but that's a bit ignorant of me to say that um I was gonna, uh, that certain countries would do so instead of having it wherein oh yeah no our our we, we only we only use the best resources and the best animals and the best bones instead of what they can do is they could just buy it from a different country ship ship all the bones abroad and do whatever with them and and this country could have very horrible or abhorrent policies when it comes to treatment of animals and people to maximize profits because it's cheaper and it's more effective so i feel like that would be an issue those are some good points um seventh do you have anything to say to what rhino said no no i'm i I would say mostly agree. What about you, sir? Yeah, Jinx. Uh, I pretty much like mostly agree with that. Uh, one also like like just like a different like side note. Uh, like uh, going a little step back towards the animal rights thing. Um, it's also like one thing is that like we more like contemplate these kind of things through like more peacetime. If uh, what's it called? If it's like a fantasy kingdom where it's like it, it's like everything is at peace and there's no like real issues ongoing then yeah we might contemplate like how to do like these animal rights better so as you like, kind of, like develop like a better uh, uh self-consciousness but well if it's like wartime or it's like shit's going haywire or you know basically like a gold tone like here towards yeah. you desperation yeah uh there's uh, those kind of concepts are probably not going to be developed yet because for the longest time animal rights weren't really a thing people dwelled upon People just basically uh, thought uh, didn't like really bat an eye. They used to just saw it and took it and do whatever they want with it. It's only like until more like more or less recently have people actually started and like like across of like how humans have lived for like you know thousands of years. And it's only like more or less more recently I've seen that people are trying to go towards the fucking animal rights uh, field. So in, in that kind of sense, I'm not too sure if there really is too much to talk about it because in the fantasy world, it might just be. In desperation it might just be uh okay listen so i need to get me a bone golem can i just like can you just sell me all your uh fucking farm boats yeah that's pretty much it i have something to say to that well, yeah you can go 
I was going to say, during wartime, I can't help but feel that certain things, like with with, with des- like uh, with, the, with as you said, with the desperation, and with um, it, we can say that all of this in peacetime, but in wartime, the situation would call for different measures being taken. I feel like during wartime, something that would definitely be done, um, and we've got we've seen similar in this in real life. Um, We've seen we've seen very similar, but luckily these haven't been fully done to the extent that they could have been done. I'm thinking you could have it where uh, dogs, wolves, or whatnot, their bones could be reanimated and they could uh, be given the strictest orders to purely just to go into the countryside of the country that is being warred with, and routinely and mercilessly attack as much livestock as possible to force desperation on this other nation. In peacetime, these could still be going on. Because how can you catch up with them? Mm. You need you need the appropriate, you need the people to make that made them to tell them to not do it. Otherwise, you have to destroy them or go through necromancy to try and control them, which can be difficult. And because of how they function, you've got a you've got undead killing machines running through the countryside, constantly looking for livestock just to kill. In peacetime, this can cause massive issues if these are still around. That's how necromancers get a bad reputation. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how do you go about the ethics of that? It's like, oh, you need to clean up your... Well, can you prove it's ours? What do you mean? We just had a war and these are going around. Yeah, but... Well, no, it's not our problem. Okay, Jinx, do you have anything to say to um, Reiner's points he brought up? No, I think it's all well uh, discussed. Mr. Spook? Ah, uh, then the thing and say on that either. Okay. I actually wanted to offer one big point. Uh, is that I think if there was magic was a thing, I think that you like it could be possible in certain settings to try to trace some kind of like you know uh, magic uh, leftover you know residue from spells to try to figure out who cast the spell. Oh, like a trail. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's just a, a world building idea. That's not a ethical thing. All right, guys, um, we're pretty much like out of time now. Uh, any closing points? Like, just anything you desperately want to get off your chest before the podcast ends? Uh, I was going to say for world building. Um, when it comes to world building with this, like if you're doing a world that has this kind of stuff then a, a kind of rule that I feel like would be good to follow, and I have struggled, I do struggle to follow this myself sometimes, is instead of adding something new, expand what you've already got. Like, this, like you can have one thing that can be really, that can be considered really small and, and not that important, but if you expand on it and the implications of all this can change and affect, then you have a massive thing by itself. Like, with the ethics of using it on animals, the ethics of, um, like, if there's no soul or not, so much of these could be could make for their own worlds it could make for their own like massive stories in of themselves so there's a lot to work with anyone else got anything or are we good i think that just as a quick point um just i am personally of the mindset that necromancy can be ethical as long as suffering is not involved and that's just my closing statement. I'd agree with that. Um, for my closing statement, I'd just like to say a lot of morality is relative. And in worlds where you're making like complex rules with different countries, it's a bad practice to have them all have the same moral standards. So you might want to diversify, even if you don't inherently agree with what they do. It's to give more depth to the people there and their cultures there because they will often deviate even if something that isn't seen ethical by like say a western sensibility in an eastern sensibility or a southern sensibility might be seen as something that is ethical Mm. that's a very good point i have something to say but does everybody else want to go before me Uh, seven four so hi any closing points Nah, I'm pretty much okay. Mm-hmm. I I agree with Reiner's uh, idea. Sorry, with with Ghost's idea, as with regards to um, taking small things and expanding upon them uh, in world building. But with regards to ethics and morality, I think it's 
um, which I'm partially guilty of this, but in bioethics, essentially, the and and in ethic, ethics in general is uh, the, the the point of it uh, is to inform um, the person of of you know what, what you're going to do and and inform the, the the anyone of what you're going to do essentially based on different moral uh, formats. So I I've been trying to be to to include as many. Uh, let's say moral standpoints as possible in my in, in in throughout the podcast today and in the, in the podcast before uh but nonetheless like the mm, it is a probably a good idea to try to get to the like the the core um the core ideas of like well is there anything about this particular this particular concept that could be considered wrong from any standpoint and then try to work from that. All right, cool. Uh, Reiner, I, th I think you want to say something. I've completely forgotten what I wanted to say now. Okay. <laughs> like I was thinking of it and then I just, I, and then I was thinking, and then I was listening to the seventh and I was thinking, <laughs> and then I went off on that and then I just, God damn it. Um. <laughs> All good. All right. So <sighs> thanks everyone for watching. Let us know what you think of the new format of me being this guy that interrupts people. Cause like, I think it went better than the usual podcast format, but I'll ask the guys what they think later and we'll, we'll find out. Um, yeah. So thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Cheers for having us. Bye.